What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. This is the Third Person Podcast. I'm Chris. That's Mike. What's up? We're talking The Walking Dead, Season 8, Episode 10, The Lost and the Plunderers. This is the, the second episode of this uh B, what do they call it? B, C, B C? side, yeah, B, B side. I don't like that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Mikey, what did you think of this episode? Because um, before I let you answer, I'm going to tell you my answer, and yeah. it was uh, it was all right. I mean, I I actually really like some parts, and other parts I just that we could have done without. I agree. You know? My my first impression was it was it was an okay episode, but you know me, I watch these episodes. Oh, multiple yeah, times more, yeah, more than once. and honestly the episode got much more interesting after watching it a, it a second time i actually came up with some cool little theory ideas okay that i want to share with you because i have some questions also that i want to pose to you uh i guess we'll kind of do that at the end so let's kind of get into um what do you want to what do you want to start off first i know that we the- kind of were talking before with the with the black screen, yeah, with the so, names, and I know a lot of people were were talking about that as well on other channels. Yeah, they, we kind of figured you and I both thought that like, oh, they're going to do the letters, like it's yes. going to be broken up, and, and, and I was excited about that. Well, you, yeah, I mean, part of me was like, oh, we've I've seen something like this before, but then, I, but I was still excited because I wanted to hear them, like I want to, you know, and then and then it's like, so here's here's what got me. It says Michonne, and then it showed a, a two minute shot of Rick at the grave. I'm like, I thought it was Michonne, like, and then it goes to Michonne. I'm like, what? Yeah. And then yeah. It, it, yeah, man, I don't know. That was a little off putting. It was, it was, it was odd. It, I, I, I thought, like you said, I thought we were going to do the letters. It would have been really cool if we had Michonne. And then you see Michonne sitting there. You know, it didn't have to be a long thing, but uh, just each person, maybe quickly, uh, you know, Enid. Uh, Negan, Rick, or whatever, something like that. And I thought that would have been interesting if we would have saw everybody kind of reading the letters at the same time. I guess I don't know. But Either way, happen. dude, there was a lot of time wasting in this. This this episode yeah. literally could have been about twenty five minutes yeah. because well, there was they. She's like, oh, he used to sit on that on the gazebo and goes over there, and they spend five minutes over. Like, what are you doing? Like, that's. So that that was a big time waster, and then we'll get to more as we go on. In fact, why don't we talk about the entire ocean side time wasting <sighs> event? That was uh, it was it was weird. When I watched it, I thought it was just odd. I feel like, first of all, when when the episode began, and I and I knew that obviously Oceanside was in it, and the, and the scavenger junkyard people were in it. I'm like, here we go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. It, it, it's weird. It's like we didn't we we get a glimpse of Oceanside way back a season ago, season and a half ago. We get a little bit of the junkyard here and there. They never really dove deep into them, right? Maybe a little bit more with the junkyard side. Well, but no, we the Oceanside really... side, we were there a while. Like we, uh, we I mean, learned about a, them a, a, a little bit. They gave us. It's been a while. Let's put it that way. It's been a while. Well, it's since definitely we been really a while. But we, I mean, we learned about we the grandmother them. and like their plight and all the men. But it was just, you know, listen. In the end, we know that you know, Aaron and Enid are captured. Enid's got this kind of ballsy little attitude with yeah. Cindy what? All, all of a sudden, she's like, "What the hell?" She's like, "She, she, she wanted me to kill her." What? What are you talking about? Now well, you watch she's creeping it. in the woods in the middle of the night. So I mean, what it, was that? Yeah, I like, don't know. I'm like, so yeah, so she's got no remorse over that. They were tied up for literally thirty seconds. Two seconds. They walked out of. They tied them up like they're going to do the most heinous. Abuse. <laughs> they're going to go deliberate for six hours. The girl, that one girl with the crazy eyes. Yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. standing there with like the the, the fishing the spear, spear, the trident, the right. They come they right back them. in. Exactly. And they come right back in in two seconds. And Ian uh, says it, a couple things. And like, all right, you can go. You're going to. So. Yeah. And then you're going to get at it and never come back. They're like, right? oh, what are you going to do? I mean, Aaron brought up some good points and so did Enid. But uh, but then oh, get out of here. Because you put a 15 year old in, in charge of an entire community. Well, that's what right? you get. Right. So it was it was kind of it felt rushed to me. Like oh. we like we just explained. But obviously we all know where what what the writers are planning with them they're gonna swoop in it's gonna be one of those things i hope not it, it's got it's got to be I, then I why would be. why would they have done what they because they do dumb things they do stop. dumb things all the time listen you know? and and look <laughs> cindy see it's like annoying me that we're cindy 
had this little cool little Tara relationship. She saved Tara a couple times and all this kind of stuff. Believe me, they wouldn't have brought Oceanside in into this universe to begin uh, with unless they were planning they? on. Wouldn't they, Mike? They do. Listen, they're not. I honestly, I don't have a lot of faith. I just think that when it's that time, oh, someone's hurt. Tara's going to get fucking Yeah, no, I mean, and... look, I, yeah, I agree. That's what I'm saying. I agree, and I think it's dumb. But listen, yeah. when, when you're off book, dude, things do not go well. When you look at, you know, even Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones went off book, and, I mean, they did some good stuff. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, it's hard to compare. It's hard to compare. Well, especially considering Game of Thrones went off book because they literally had no choice. Wow. I, you know, unless he's been giving them notes about, you know, whatever. We don't know how. Well, yeah, we don't I know think how, he gave but, them the end game. Well, right. So, but the point is, is, is this is a very distinct direction and mm. they're not following it, which is fine. But uh, so obviously Aaron is doing it because he's he feels like he's got nothing really left because Aaron's creeping behind the tree. Right. No, First. Creep. OK, man. <laughs> so, yeah. So he so. Eric was his name. Eric was his boyfriend. Eric dies, yeah. and he's at the point where he's like, "I don't care." Mm-hmm. So, I, so fine, whatever you want to play that trope, go for it. And then he just like backs up behind the tree, like, "What?" Stalker so, mission, so man. anyway, we talk way too much about Oceanside. It was weird. Yes. It was dumb. It didn't need to be in the episode. That's about that's that's you know ten minutes <laughs> that we could have cut out. Um, and then oh, uh, Simon, you want to go over there? Yeah, well, of course, Simon and the scavengers. He he. It's it's so funny because he's such a great actor. Oh, he's one of the dudes. Yeah, right. He's, he's probably he Stephen probably Augustus was one of best. This this he yeah. he the best assist. He he had the best performance in the episode. Oh, definitely, yeah. And it was interesting to see his his back and forth with Negan. The, the relationship, and, right? Yeah. And um, you know, because obviously Simon doesn't agree with the way Negan's handling. No, things. not at this point. He's going ballistic. Exactly. And Negan pretty much says, dude, you're going to do what I told you. You're going to go to the junkyard and you're going to take out one of their guys and make sure that they know, you know, where the, the allegiance lies. Yeah. To, to, you know, to Negan, not to cut you off, but to Negan, yeah. it's a simple formula and mm-hmm. it's worked in the past. And you know what? He's not wrong. He's not wrong. Well, so, Simon's also not, not wrong by saying it's not working right now. Well, but, but because yeah, it's you know? because of Rick. And he says, once I clip I Rick, yeah. notice how he used the word clip. Yeah, well, clippers, <laughs> clippy, but it was, you know, the 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 Jada stuff. Like I said in the beginning, it's kind of like, oh my god, let's let's hope that something better will come out of this episode. And I think, really, in the end, oh my god, it, it please. did, it I, did. I, I mean, dude, I I kind of enjoyed it, and kinda, dude. I was cheering. I was like, yes. This well, is great. First of all, Negan called them garbage people, and that's what we've been calling them. And that's the first time they <laughs> called them that. And then and then Simon calls them like garbage trash rats or something. Yeah, dude, yeah. that was awesome. I was like, yes. And then we get that scene, and dude, they got everything that was coming to them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And Jadis got yeah. everything that she deserved. Mm-hmm. It was that was the most satisfying part for me. Not only was Stephen Ogg's performance, he's just so good to watch, man. It's just he is he's he's very good. I thought um, I just it's his mannerisms remorse. and yeah, it's his mannerisms and everything. And he's just like I said, he did a fantastic job. And to see all of Jadis's people get slaughtered and that was great. What do you think about the trap that Jadis right, so, set? Yeah, so. And Rick and Michonne fall. So fall. I enjoyed the I enjoyed the time jumps back and forth. I enjoyed mm-hmm. that this this episode. I normally don't put that yeah. in for some reason, but this was cool. This was like, oh my god, what's that? And then you when you and then when it comes back to the junkyard and you realize that it's all of her people, like, oh, that wasn't part of the trap, but it was. But mm-hmm. like, oh my god, like in the blue paint and like, dude, that was crazy. And then Jadis's trap to save herself. Why couldn't you have just done that? I guess she was in shock. I guess you want. Well, I, you know, I thought about that too, and by watching it again, I came to a different conclusion of yeah. that. Obviously, she was waiting. She set that trap, so she wasn't going to kill her people before at, at that moment because she was hoping, or not necessarily hoping, but just in the case of the the saviors coming back, she had that trap wasn't for Rick. No, right? Sure. It was for yeah. It that was trap for, yeah. was for 
but like vengeance and, yeah, right if, exactly if, yeah. if, if the saviors were coming back because i thought that too i even wrote it down i'm like no wait and i erased it but it was you know we had some co- cool walker stuff we really never seen a bunch of walkers falling into one of these that was great and the cgi walkers. wasn't that bad man them it bouncing around they make yeah. them they made her people bounce around like i was like come on it, i'd like to see how cool. they did that i wonder if like it wouldn't cool. it be somewhat cool if they put Obviously, they green they green screen stuff. <laughs> you say you they put throw... them on wires and just shook them around. No, no, no. <laughs> but what if you throw a green outfit on like a mannequin and throw them in there? Yeah, that would work. Yeah, of course. Right or something. So I was just I was I thought like about boing, that. Boing, like, boing, I wonder, boing, yeah, yeah. I wonder how that would. Uh, it was, oh, and the meat, fun. dude. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. I was half expecting her to like put that put that shit on like a little patty and start eating it. But well, the the uh, end game in that was weird. I was hoping. And now after watching it the first time, I was hoping Jadis was going to kill herself. Like I was just at that point where it's like, I can't stand you. You know what I mean? Just jump yep. in there. Yep. Right. Right. Oh, now, now she's mad at Rick and Negan. I don't know. See, I didn't think she was mad. I think she can understand where Rick was coming from. Rick could have killed her. He shot above her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't, <laughs> I think that um, she could relate and understand rick's side of it now the negan part of it the simon part of it the savior part of it she's now they just wiped out all yeah she's all pissed at, she's pissed at you them. know what i mean but what, what's funny is that late the next scene is rick trying to like he's telling michelle he's like well you know i mean i didn't kill her mm-hmm. i didn't kill her and, and michelle kinda... oh go ahead go ahead and you know how michelle they're both they i think they're both struggling with carl's last wish they're both like yeah you know michonne's like well this is what he wanted and rick's like i know but we can't we i'm glad i'm glad i agree i'm I'm glad that rick said um to the whole negan thing not to get too far ahead but i'm just i'm glad that rick said i have to kill you because i understand it's you can't just take carl's words or carl's wishes and end it right then and there Uh, we see the little part of the letter that rick read uh, or Rick, you know, said to to Negan about how he wants them to to come at peace, and and I, I mean, listen, we both know that that's not that's not possible. So going further, I can see Carl's words being more impactful in Rick's way of doing things. Well, let me ask you, you this. I mean? Let me ask you this. So yeah. we're, we're talking about the scene between Rick and Negan. Mm-hmm. When that when the, when that was coming up, I was like, oh. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. And then yeah. you get Rick t- telling Negan and Negan's reaction, which was uh, expected and really well done to me. And then you have Rick's reaction, who he sounds like a, he sounds like a mad and angry child. That ruined it for me, dude. It ruined it. And, and, in, that, and in that situation, I was on Team Negan because Rick's like, well, I'm going to kill you. No, well, I don't care. I'm going to kill you anyway. And I'm going to kill. And I'm like, wow, you're making yourself sound like a little bitch right now. <laughs> well, I think that Negan was, first of all, I, wa- I wanted to share something with you and see what, if you agree or not. Yeah. I mean, listen, um, a season before, Negan was going to bash Carl's skull in. Right. So it was hard for me to believe that Negan felt as much remorse or, you know, pity, sorrow as he showed in the episode. So that was my first thing. I'm like, all right, this guy was just going <laughs> to kill but, him. But don't forget, because in this episode, they set it up. He says to Simon, that kid's really made for this. Like, they set yeah. it up. And I a believe little, that. A little I blatant. Mean, I, yeah, a little blatant. I, I, but... I, be- I believe that Negan feels no, I that do. way. I genuinely believe that Negan feels is upset about the fact that that call is yeah. gone but well, he, he said a he lot of it was a lo- exactly a lot of it with the jabs he kind of was like and i think he definitely knew what he was saying to rick by saying it's your fault and and, and oh well absolutely and all that like, kind of stuff and trying to th- I actually you know i have a question f- about that to you i want to see what right. you what you how you feel about that now do you feel that it was rick's fault that that carl died you know what i mean no, I don't do know. It's not Rick's fault because Rick, what, uh, according to Negan, it's Rick's fault because he didn't fall in line. I'm, yeah. I'm personally, I would have, you know, I'm the same 
temperament and of the same mind as Rick. I would, I don't like being, um, subjugated like that. I would not want to be subjugated like that. So no, Rick was, Rick was absolutely not at fault, but he's yeah. just trying to get him. You know, he's, he's doing what trying I, to fuck him up. He's trying, he's trying to no mess him up like and, that, but he's also, yeah. I mean, look, he's Negan is, and we've said it before. Negan's not a dumb man, mm-hmm. but you know, and he, he uses everything he can to get his way, whether that be, you know, sugaring someone up or calling them out on their bullshit or just yeah. killing people to make people, um, his subjects. So he, what he was said to Rick was, was it for a number of different reasons. One, maybe, maybe he wouldn't have to lose any more of his people and Rick would surrender, or maybe he'll get Rick mad enough to that. He'd make another mistake and he can catch him on it and clip him. You know what I mean? Like, so he did that for multiple reasons and and that's fine. But you know, I, you know, I agree as well. I think, do you think that there's some fear in Negan about maybe, of course, you know, I can absolutely. That's why. Guy, that's you know, why he's, he's of a scare tactic. Kind well, of. that's why he's trying to get more people. Yeah. You know, and that's why he's maintaining the status quo by saying, "Simon, this is what we do. We don't just kill yeah. people because we need them because he needs him to fight Rick, and he understands that." Now, yeah. As far as as far as Negan's, like I said, I enjoyed that side of the conversation. Like to me, that was very sincere from Negan, yeah. and it was and it was it was a moment that I would have loved to see two adversaries share in the love, you know, however each of them love this boy, I would have loved to see that. But again, it was ruined with Rick being like, well, I'm going to kill you. I'm gonna... Like it just, it ruined it. It took, <laughs> that's not Rick Grimes to me. And I understand yeah. that he's upset, but he had more chutzpah in the, in the beginning of the season or the end of last season when, when, when they had them in Alexandria last season, he's like, I'm going to kill you. Like, that was more, this was just a little angry kid spouting dumb things. Well, and, it, and it ruined it. It ruined it because that, that, but that could have been the, the best scene for, you know, now, um, I have a question for you and I don't know if you have any other questions for me, but my I do. question, I have a couple things. Yeah. All right. So, uh, go ahead. I'll, I'll ask mine's mine's an ending. All mine's right. like my, my question is, Yours what was your there. favorite? <laughs> you kind of answered it, but what was your favorite part of this episode? And I think for both of us, it, it was the, it was the Simon and Jada stuff. Well, after watching, after the first time I've watched it, I really enjoyed the Negan Rick stuff at the end. Okay. After watching it a second time, I posed a couple cool little theories, things that I caught the second time Okay, that I'll explain to you. But before I do that, I want to talk to you about, the Simon disobeying Negan. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we you know we said Negan says one person. He takes out the all these scavengers. Simon has to know. Simon does know that Negan will find out. Right. Right. Simon's not stupid. Simon know, knows Negan's not stupid. Do you think Simon can plot to kill Negan? And not give a shit that he disobeyed him because I'm gonna take him out. Yeah, I yeah. So um, my thought on this, I had a, a thought about it, is that Simon's gonna Simon is either going to attempt to kill Negan, although I don't think that's what's gonna happen. I think what's gonna happen is Negan will call Simon out on his actions, and he yeah. and he's gonna kill uh, Simon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I because kinda, Negan's, I can agree with that. Negan's gotta Negan's gotta show who's top dog. Who's yeah. alpha, and this is a classic case of the beta, you know, trying to take over, you know, alpha or to become alpha. Now, I'm yeah. not saying we don't have any any real evidence that that's what Simon's doing. However, Simon is openly questioning Negan's motives and actions, and you know that Negan won't stand for that. So, at some point, probably maybe the end of this season, I think Simon's going to go away. Yeah, I, I mean, I I agree. You know, yeah. it was. I have I have one last question, mm-hmm. um, but I do don't forget I have a couple of theories. Yeah. Um, what's going to happen with Jadis now that um, that Rick left and and all her people are, are nothing? Killed? I think I don't think anything's happening with Jadis. I think we're not going to see Jadis if we if we see you her again. Gonna, you don't think she's going to join, help, like help out in some way? I think like if if now. we if we do see her again this season, she'll show up at the hilltop or something. Okay. That's it. I don't think we're going to, or we won't see her at all. And we'll see her again next season or something or, or, or in the finale, but she's not. Yeah. yeah, I think she's a survivor. She's going to survive, but she's going to probably show up at Rick's door at some point. That's what I think. Okay. 
I can agree with that. You have any questions for me before I tell? Well, you yeah, I was going to say what we, what your favorite part was, but I guess we did answer that. Like, like oh, no, no, like I said, yeah, my my favorite part before watching it was the Rick Negan stuff. Yeah. After watching it a, a second time, I came up with I have a I had a, listen. I thought it was okay in the beginning. Now, after watching it again, I I actually thought it was good. You know, okay. because I caught some things. Let me just tell yeah, you. Give it to me. Screw it. Right. Yeah. So we know that when Simon goes to the scavengers, right? Mm-hmm. He talks about seeing a helipad and solar panels, right? We know that in episode two of this season, Rick saw a helicopter. Right. After Jadis's people are all wiped out, Jadis and Rick leaves. Jadis climbs down. She opens up. It looks like a file cabinet where she pulls out a box that has um, like applesauce written well, on it. That's all that was written on the box. But that I, L- listen, yeah. listen. It says applesauce times 20 or something like that, right? So I'm thinking they wouldn't purposely have Simon say these things. They even gave us images. Say um, what things? Oh, the the helicopter. Exactly. Yeah, the teaser images and things like that that we even got. There was a teaser image of Rick standing on the pile. I think we got at the beginning of the season. And the helipad was in the back. So let me cut to the point. I thought it was awkward that there would be something written about what the contents of the box were. If it was her people or something, Jadis's people that were putting the food there, they would know that the food is here. I would know that the food is here. I would know that the food is here. So I was thinking about this and I'm saying, what if there's some kind of community that Jadis and the junkyard people were um, trading with or bartering with to where, all right, Jadis, you have this, 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 and this. Because I think there's some weird stuff about the junkyard, and they mentioned some weird things like you built this place. Yeah, and what they're was like, this? this was just right? trash, and we put they made they made the heat right. So there's there's some kind of secret shit going on. Yeah, with the junkyard. So now I was thinking, we saw this. We saw in episode two the Rick sees the helicopter. I don't think it was a, a you know hallucination. Rick, or yeah, hallucination or anything. People from a community that we don't know about. Fly in, land on this helicopter on this helipad. It would be a difficult spot to just land anywhere in this junkyard, right? The way they have it set up. Boom, boom, helicopter lands. We do dealings with a group, an unnamed group, a group Mm -hmm. that we don't know about except for the scavengers. Here's this, here's that, and then they fly off. I just thought that was very interesting, and it would be kind of cool to see that or hint to us that they're maybe some other communities and if you are a fan of the comics and you are way ahead perhaps it could be someone else without spoiling um but i just thought it was odd i just thought (laughs) that it was odd that the box was labeled that way and it seemed like it was in like a secret compartment almost like a drop box kind of a thing yeah so what what do you you know what do you think about that you think i have any kind of merit with what uh i think part i think part one with the helipad you do i'll get to that i'll go to the back to that in a second but the stuff Mm -hmm. with the box yeah. I looked at that and I was like, I just saw that as a box. Like she found the box that someone wrote some shit on. I didn't really, I know she can I actually thought it was going to be like armor, like clothes. And like, she was going to like get, you know, put her stuff back on and like, go back, go out by herself or something. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it says well, she knew at, exactly where it was. Well, that's I what mean, I'm saying. It was like definitely a stash found. Right. So I, I'm not, look, I'm not, I'm not really going to make much comment on that. It, it's a, it's obviously a secret stash that, only her and maybe her, you know, any other confidants she let in know. Yeah. The helipad thing is now I am, you know, I'm caught up on the comic, so I don't know what I should say or shouldn't say considering you haven't, but... Well, let's not spoil. I mean, we don't have to necessarily as far spoil as, look, it at all. But... If it's... It, it, I My original thought was that, yes, they they might be teasing something that they're going to be doing in the comic and that they might be pulling something from the comic in a lot earlier than it is than it happened in the comic and that's that's all i'll say about that cool so yeah i yeah definitely all right i just thought it was you know it was one of those things where i just you know watching every anything again yeah well it kind of hits you and you get some kind of ideas like that was weird you know and that kind of stuck out for me i just thought it was odd with the the contents of the box written on there or anything my last theory was is with simon okay now when simon and negan are talking before simon goes and slaughters everybody negan specifically says the one person we know that okay but it was just the way that he he said it 
like oh, as Simon, if, as if he's done like it Simon before, has yeah. done this before. Yeah. So I was thinking what what the episode start with was the ocean side. I kind of want to put two and two together and say that at some point Negan put out the order to kill one of the ocean side men, and Simon slaughtered all of them. Yep. Yeah. And it wasn't necessarily Negan that did it, but it was one individual savior, Simon. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll, uh, I'll jump on that bandwagon. I, I agree because there's got to be a reason why Stupid Ocean Side is involved, and they're trying to interweave these stories, and they're not that great at it, but they're doing it. So, yeah. you know, look, overall, I'm, I'm not exactly happy where the show is. I'm a little disappointed yeah. in it. Um. And it's definitely fallen off. And and you know what? I think it has largely to do with the fact that we're watching some other stuff, you know, that is just light years beyond this and show. Other other stuff meaning other other TV <laughs> shows, man. There's other TV shows out there that I'm that yeah, I know dude. that I'm watching. That's just yeah. that they're just fantastic. And we've named a few here and there on the show. But mm-hmm. you know, there's just some stuff that are just like. I mean, the leftovers like blows this out of the water. Like you just don't. It doesn't get any better than leftovers. You know what I the mean? The leftovers like, was cool because they had a plan set. They had a start and they had a finish. It wasn't but, like but it's Walking just, Dead. To but where, it's just. It's just in general. It doesn't. It just doesn't. You know. I know one zombies. Well, because they can build it up. Like leftovers, they knew exactly what they were gonna do. It was a three. No, seasons. but I'm talking about the minutia, man. I'm not talking about the overall. I'm talking about the minutia, like dialogue and situations and you know what i mean don't get me wrong Mm -hmm. the walking dead has some of the finest actors that you're ever going to see on tv that's not the point but the shit they're saying is not good the situations are not good fear the walking dead is going to come back and it's going to be not good it's going to be dumb because (laughs) they're not being smart you there Uh, are there are zombie movies that are even made today there's a movie there's a you know the video game dead rising there's yeah. a movie on Crackle that was created for Crackle, and there's now a second one, actually. They made two Dead Rising movies. i only seen the first one. But, dude, it was a really good movie. It was a really yeah. fun, cool zombie movie that had better dialogue and situations than, than some of these Walking Dead episodes. Walking oh. Dead has been f- losing n- the numbers. You know, now, okay, mind you, it's 8.9 million viewers. We get it. That's more than any other TV show could possibly want. I get that. But... It's still number two, only under Game of Thrones. Yeah. Okay, we get that. But the point is, is logistically, it's still losing a lot because it is what it is. Now, it's a juggernaut. It doesn't matter. I'm going to keep watching it, yes. but Of course. Of you know, course. especially going back and seeing episode, you know, season one, which we just did on the rewatch, the react. Um, I, man, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, where I'm at with this. You know what it is? It was, it was the injection of these junk people and the and ocean side and these plot lines that just don't go anywhere with nothing. And, and then Morgan. And it's just, I don't know, man. I just, it could be, it could be done. So I don't want to get into a whole nother discussion about it. Cause we're almost yeah. at 30 minutes now, but I'm just giving you my final sense of where, where, where I'm at with this show. I mean, I, I agree. Listen, I'm going to be a bit more optimistic I know no! that we, <laughs> I know that um listen, it was it was it was odd that they introduced the, the oceanside people. We see them here and there. They introduced the scavengers, and now the scavengers are just wiped out. So it's almost like they wrote some things on a chalkboard and said, eh, this isn't really working. Let's wipe it out. Nobody off. likes them, we're done. You know, so I, I, I hope they get away from that. And maybe they can take pointers from our "Is there a cure?" video about maybe sh- implementing some other storylines to the show, and not always uh, would the Walking Dead be about a Negan or this a power struggle. Or well, I'm going to tell you right uh, now, if they're not going to do a cure, they're going to do more power struggle. They're gonna they're yeah. gonna give us uh, this is what's going to happen, Mikey. They're going to give us a bunch of um, things are going to after All Out War, things are going to get better, and mm-hmm. then they're going to introduce another thing. And whether that's going to be this or that, there's always yeah. going to have to be a thing. Otherwise, there's no reason for it. There's no reason to have the show. There's no reason to do it if they're not going to show the strife of people in the apocalypse. Now, yeah. it doesn't mean it can't be good because it can be good. They just have to do it better. Well, we'll see what happens with to the me. new showrunner in, in, you know, with season nine and where they go. Yeah. You know, I guess with that said, you know. But like I said, it's still, it's still one of my favorite shows. I'm going to watch it. I don't hate watch it. I love it. 
Yeah. All, the whole week I've been I've been saying it's all for you, Coral. <laughs> I've been saying it all week. You know, it's all for you. you yeah. Know? How about the fact that Jadis actually broke character and loved started, it. I right? loved it. She does a pretty good American accent for right? a British was, chick. Uh, I loved it. Was- it. A bit strange. It was a bit strange that she was up on the hill with a slip on. After. Yeah, that was. But no, it's not because she's a weird dumbass, and she's. It's just her, man. It's perfect yeah. for the character. But you know what? That hey. I was very happy about all of that. That was, and if and if it was a whiteboard situation where they said not working, get rid of it. Yeah. That was one of the coolest situations that that has ever been on The Walking Dead, especially not including the main characters. Fantastic, no. really good and- stuff. Fabulous. So anyway, all right. So all right. thirty minutes. We did it. We did double the length we wanted to do, Mikey. But you know what? But, we had hey, a lot we to got say. Some, we, we got some good stuff. We got some cool ideas. So I, uh, right. We hey, hope let's... you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> exactly. I hope you guys are enjoying the season so far. We're only two episodes in, so let's hope for uh, for better uh, episodes ahead. Of course, write in the comment section below. We love to hear from you guys in the YouTube channel, of course. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram at Third Person Pod and, of course, on Facebook and, of course, on iTunes. That's it. Guys, thank you so much. Keep uh, keep all those comments coming, and we'll see you on the next episode of Third Person Talking. Third Person. Peace. See ya.